My name is Sid Haas. Great. Vice President of Business Development here at LKCS. And I want to welcome you to today's webinar um, on how to make more loans and how we can make it easy. Uh, I'm joined today by Michael Goyne with Lenderful Solutions. Um, and, and he's going to show you their innovative approach um, to, uh, to generating loans uh, through their digital lending platform. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Michael. Great. Thanks, Sid. Can, uh, can you hear me all right? Yep, everything's good. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time this afternoon to join LKCS and uh, Lenderful Solutions as well. As uh, Sid said, my name is Michael Goyne, Director of Business Development at Lenderful Solutions. Uh, I'll provide you with some additional contact information at the end of the webinar. Um, we are a software as a service company based out of Pontiac, Michigan. We focus on financial software, primarily lending point of sale software for mortgage, home equity, unsecured personal loans, and soon we're going to be adding um, auto lending and uh, potentially some other sales channels as well. But we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later in the presentation. And uh, we've been doing this for about, about five years, and uh, we partnered with LKCS about, so I guess it's coming up on almost a year now. And uh, they've been a fantastic partner for us and uh, resell all of our products, have access to all of our products. And we'll talk a little bit about more how you can move forward at the end of the presentation as well. Um, I'm just going to start by painting the picture of kind of where we are today, why uh, you need to consider either entering into the digital space when it comes to your lending channels, or if you have something that you consider a digital solution, why it might be time to, to upgrade and uh, look at solutions that really kind of um, up, up your game and kick things up a notch compared to you know, what you might have via your website or other tools. So if, if there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us is that yeah, there is no business as usual, world has changed, but you really have to have digital solutions in order to engage and, and do business when you have these types of, of things happen. And, and really it's become a much higher demand from your member base or client base than it ever was before because of what the pandemic has, has driven them to, to do from a kind of banking or a credit union engagement behavior standpoint. So the real question is now, you know, we know that, and I'm sure, those of you that have been in various other webinars or conferences or conventions, you've been sort of beat over the head with um, you've got to go digital. You've got to come up with more solutions for your, your member base or your clients. You, you have to be able to, to do business <clears throat> outside of the branch, et cetera. You know, the real question now is how are you moving forward? Do you have a strategy? And are you really, more importantly, taking some of those first steps to, to provide the most modern and capable digital experience that you can. So let's just talk about some of the benefits. If uh, you weren't convinced this is a direction you need to go already, let's just talk about some of the things that, that getting into digital lending can do for you. Well, first and foremost, it's going to certainly improve the member uh, experience, your client experience, and, uh, and give them a reason to want to either do business with you or stay doing business with you and see that uh, you are moving forward into the future just like they are. Uh, obviously, we know that um, millennials love to investigate, learn, and shop on their own, but at the same time, they wanna be able to talk to somebody, but you've gotta be able to provide them with that upfront experience where they can do a lot of that work on their own, and if they don't have that experience, there's a good chance they're not gonna do business with you. Um, there are still competitive advantages out there. I know we've been talking about digital for a long time, and it said there's various levels of adoption, but most of the adoption has really been at the, what I would call the larger end of the spectrum, your, your large banks, your large non-bank lenders, the likes of Quicken, obviously, and uh, Loan Depot and, and things along those lines, and they've taken share because of it. There's no doubt about it. However, when it comes to maybe your local market um, within your state and such, there's still, an, there's still time to get ahead of that adoption curve in comparison to some of your, your local competitors. So there's still competition advantages available to you. One thing that um, I think the pandemic also shot, showed us is that it was difficult to increase the scale of your capabilities in terms of taking applications and underwriting applications and processing applications and all of that. 
and when you have digital solutions, when, when you have components of that process that have been digitized or enabled in that, that, fast, that fashion, it really increases your ability to scale your operations without having to add, to add a lot of people. It also opens up new sales channels. Um, I think some people think along these lines, but I think there's a lot that are still not thinking along these lines, and they don't look at their own existing website as a real sales tool, as a way to generate business. They see it as more of a resource or reference for their members and clients, uh, and, and just a way to sort of go, all right, you go here if you want to take a look at your checking or savings balance, or if you want to get a little bit of information about what we do, or, if, you know, it's it, again, it's more just reference and resource. It's not seen as a tool to generate business. Um, and I think you need to start looking at it in that respect because more and more people are going to engage your businesses via the website first before actually engaging your people. Sales process and cost efficiency, some of the stuff is, is pretty evident. Um, obviously, you can, you can improve the overall sales process and the cost of that sales process by having digital solutions and the particular point of sale solutions like we're going to talk about today. And one thing that, that I've heard from several lender clients of ours is that without a, without a quality education and application component on their website or through a microsite, there's no way they would have been able to handle all the influx of uh, inquiries that they've had today. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Data mining. So if you have people that are inputting information about themselves and their financial situation and such um, in applications or in just inquiries for rates and such online. It gives you the ability to mine all of that data and really identify other products and services that that customer might be interested in. So it provides multiple product opportunities, product marketing opportunities. And it, it also improves your, your overall engagement level. Um, it's just every industry out there is trying to figure out how do I create more touch points with my members or with my customers, with my consumers. And having that digital experience, it allows you to provide another mechanism for contacting that customer, for staying in touch with that customer and, and reminding them that you're there to service them. And I'll, I'll show when we go through the demonstration how some of that might work. And I, I, I've heard people you know, get a little bit scared about uh, going to certain types of digital solutions because they, they feel that the value of their particular credit union or community bank is, is the people. And I, I can't argue with that. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, but you've seen a lot of, uh, we'll call them digital strategists and such talk about, hey, you know, if you go to these solutions, you're going to need less people or you're not going to need people in some cases. I, I disagree with that significantly, especially when it comes to the market segment that, that we are focused on and LKCS is focused on, and that is the credit union and community banking space. We look at it as it's not a transition from people and paper to digital. It's really a transition from that people and paper to digital and people. So what you're doing is you're using those digital solutions to empower your people, to help them provide an even higher quality level of service and, uh, and make them much more valuable in the eyes of their, their customers and their borrowers. So I think a big question that comes up is, all right, that's all great. Yep, sounds, sounds fantastic, but where do I start? Well, our argument is that there's no better time than the present. You've got to do something. And, uh, and I think it's important to keep in mind that it's an evolution. Um, it is not a revolution. You don't have to change every single part of your process or every single sales channel, lending channel, all at once. You need to look at where you can make the most um, benefit or bang for your buck, so to speak. And, and, and you can take your time. Um, However, the opportunity is definitely now, and, um, it's, and we understand that it's easy to get lost with all the various different technologies that are out there in the market today. You can go into e-closing, you can go into certain types of um, processing automation efficiencies and such with automating VOIs and VOEs and all, uh, things along those lines, automatic underwriting engines. There's, there's all sorts of different things that you can do out there, and it's very easy to kind of go, well, um, that's all fine and dandy, but which one makes the most sense for me to implement today? Well, we argue that you should start with what we think is the easiest and most important piece, and that is um, something that we'll also explain that won't impact your future technology decisions. Because I think sometimes people will get kind of that analysis paralysis and they'll say, all right, 
if I do this, is this going to potentially disrupt my capability to do something else? Or if I adopt this particular system, is it going to provide me the uh, ability then to, to adopt this disparate system for another part of my process? Well, we believe you can get started um, with something that won't impact those decisions, will allow you the freedom to make those different types of decisions, but will impact, again, what the most important piece of that puzzle is, and that is putting your member or your customer first. If you don't have volume, meaning if you don't provide them with the experience and, and the motivation for them to want to apply, then it doesn't really matter what you do downstream with the rest of your process. You need volume, otherwise you're not, you know, efficiency is irrelevant. You're not going to be able to garner any efficiencies downstream. So if you're not providing that upfront experience for your member, for your borrowers, they're gonna go elsewhere. And whether that's existing membership or whether it's potential new membership, that experience that when they first connect with you or they first decide that they want to investigate a loan with you, if you don't have the appropriate experience there, you're most likely going to going to lose. So our whole kind of mantra is make sure that you enable your borrowers with technology without sacrificing that personal touch that we know you do extremely well. That's something that that, that obviously uh, you've hung your, hung your hat on for, for decades and um, and it's certainly worked. And again, I don't believe it's going away. But if you don't have the technology to dovetail with it, then they will go elsewhere. Um, and, and also, too, by starting at the front end, you're, you are actually creating some efficiencies that maybe a lot of people don't think of. And that is efficiency at the loan originator level, um, the loan officer level. They need help, especially right now. Um, they have a lot of people contacting them for rate inquiries or just asking about different loan types or have shopping questions and such. If you have the ability to provide an online solution that does all of that for them, it doesn't take them out of the process. It doesn't take them out of that ultimate um, uh, process of getting that customer through to the finish line and closing the loan. But what it does do is it frees up a lot of their time so that they can be at their highest and best use. Um, we've had customers tell us that, you know, I'm just getting bombarded with rate inquiries, I've got the same customer calling me every other day and such. Well, if you had uh, the capability online for them to just go and they can check whenever they want 24 seven, then those calls aren't necessarily coming into the loan originator. And even better, when they do check and they all of a sudden decide that's the right rate for me and the right program for me, if you give them the ability to apply right there online in a very, very simple fashion, you have a much, much higher likelihood of capturing the business. So I'm going to jump in and talk a little bit about or show you a little bit about what we're talking about. So I'm going to get out of this. And go into here. They said I'm going to pause for just a second. Any any questions? I, I'm guessing you're monitoring that for me. I am monitoring the questions. Um, the only question I have is, is um, relating to kind of the digital experience and then what you're seeing um, as far as uh, how long is this. I'm sure you'll get into it, but uh, how long is it taking for people to make this transition into the, the you know, to, to transition into right. a mortgage application, so. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, it, um, there are different solutions out there that, you know, some of you on the call may already have, especially on the mortgage side. There have been online applications out there for a long time, or maybe your loan origination system offers some type of, of online application. And that's all fine and dandy, but if you think that's providing a modern digital experience, um, you're, you're wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I think what a lot of uh, lenders see is that, hey, I've got an online application. I can just point my customer to that online application if that's what they want to do. And that's, that's correct as long as you're talking to them before they decide to go in and apply. And that's generally what is, that's, that's not, always what is happening. And that goes back to my comment about using your website as a sales tool. Uh, you don't know what type of business you're missing when people go to your website and they look for information and don't find it and they'll go somewhere else. They're not going to apply unless they get something of value and they get some of the information that you're looking for and you sort of lead them, lead them down that sales funnel to ultimately apply. And we see everything from just you know basic form applications out there where you literally display the 1003, which is a horrible experience, or you have them 
uh, you have a, a third party that pops up and said, hey, you're now going to another another system, another another company to do this. That tends to scare members away. Or it pops up and says, okay, great, you want to apply. All right, let's let's create an account. And then you have to put a user name and a password in and, and the last thing anybody else wants to do these days is to have another password another username to remember and such so um, our point of sale systems stay away from all of that and it goes back to the title of this webinar and that is if you want more loans you have to make it easy and so uh, that is how all of our software is developed it's really with the borrower in mind and to make it easy as possible for them to complete that application and then ultimately make it as easy for you to take that application and run with it based on your existing processes. So, did, did I touch yeah. on your question? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, great. So, so what you're seeing on your screen here now is just our our demo site, our wonderful demo site, and this is our this is our mortgage, our first mortgage platform. And as I mentioned earlier, we have mortgage, home equity, and unsecured personal loan currently. And they all have the same type of look and feel in, in terms of how they operate, but it's important to know that everything is configurable and customizable to your brand, to your voice, to your underwriting requirements. So everything that you see here uh, can, can be made to look just like it came out of your institution. So everything is, is, is white labeled, private labeled, however you want to look at that. Um, and there's different ways of, of laying all of this out, but the platform itself, um, if you think about it as a kind of a plug into your existing website, if uh, somebody goes into your website and clicks on mortgage, for instance, it would then take them to this particular component of your website, like a, a subdomain is how we generally deploy it. And as you can see here, it just provides them with some information, different things that you can do, maybe some comments from your customers, why you, we can link it to your about us, things along those lines. We also have a full learning center that's a part of the package, talks about all the different definitions and, and detailed information about various things they might wanna learn about when it comes to the mortgages. It also includes a full suite of calculators, mortgage refinance, amortization, loan affordability, so on and so forth. And there's a, there's a larger suite available that you can pick from. And then loan options, uh, maybe you would wanna add FHA or VA and depending on what you offer, but all of that again is configurable. Um, you can also have a contact, which would go directly to a kind of a contact us type page that would get submitted to whatever in inbox uh, you decide. And like, all of that, again, is completely configurable based on your particular preferences. But generally, when someone is wanting to talk about mortgages, they're generally, okay, maybe they are ready to apply, and that's great. We can certainly affect that. And uh, we can support purchasing refinances and, uh, and pre-qualification, and I'll come back to that in a bit. But generally what they're doing is like, yeah, I'd like to see what your rates are and, and what kind of terms and programs might be available. So let's just show a refinance situation because obviously everybody's pretty busy with refinances these days. So if they were to come in here and, and say, all right, I'm interested in a refinance application, they'd click on that and it would run them through a series of just very short questions, simple questions. What's the purpose of your refinance? What's the property used for? What type of property are you refinancing? And, and, and we try to present these in a very, very simplistic way. Uh, we try to keep it uncluttered. Um, if there are questions about like, what's this question really mean? We do have these little question marks that, that provide additional information if they have questions about it. Um, and also I should mention too that all of our software is optimized for whatever platform the borrower member would be coming in on. So if they're using a phone or if they're using a tablet, or if they're using a laptop, everything is perfectly scaled for the platform that they're on. Credit score, whether you're going to have an escrow for taxes and insurance, estimated home value. And I'll just throw in these numbers here, zip code. And then, then it asks for your contact information. So it, it, this is all sort of part of the behavioral science that's behind this software here. Um, but we don't just haphazardly rant or order these questions in a way that um, doesn't make sense. So we, we do it in a way that we get to a point where that, that member, that borrower is like, oh, okay, well, I've answered some questions. I, I really do want to see what they have to say. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put my contact information again so I get it. So you're getting a lead. So once I submit that, what it's doing is it's going out and hitting the, um, our, our own internal rate engine. And we actually pull 
the rates for that day, for that particular time, based on the investors that you, you utilize for mortgages. And we've got a couple of different ways of skinning that cap, but it's all real time and uh, would be specific to this particular situation. And then it pops up the programs that that particular borrower in that particular situation would be eligible for. In this case, we show FHA, conventional, 15-year, 10-year, et cetera. Payments, rates, APRs, discount fees, and premium. And they have the ability to email that, those rates to themselves, should they desire. They also have the ability to adjust those terms. It's like, oh, you know what? I just looked. My uh, loan amount's not quite as high as I thought. So they can recalc. It comes back and provides an updated chart. I know it's a little slow. It's just because we're on GoToWebinar and the website. So it updates everything for them. But the whole idea is for them, oh, and you can see, I just received an email that said, thank you for your submission. I'm going to go to that real quickly. So this is a way for you to sort of stay in front of your potential borrower, your member. So if they don't complete the application, they will get this app, they will get this email right away and they can go back in, they can check rates again. They can go back in and apply right from this email and it introduces a loan officer to, and there's different ways of assigning which loan officer that might be. So, there we go back into my go to meeting here. Um, but the whole idea is you want them to apply, right? But if this is where they stop, you are getting what we call kind of a short form lead with their contact information. And you're getting all of the uh, detail in terms of the answers to the questions and what type of, what type of pro pro programs that they uh, inquired about. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of feedback there. Sid, I don't know if that's... Yeah, well, I think there was... There we go. A little, a little lag oh. in, the, in the screen refresh as well. So... Hopefully it'll clear up here in a minute. Okay. All right. We're, we're, I'm still seeing the lenderful. Uh, the whole idea screen. is trying to. Oh, oh. Yes, we are getting some lag, aren't we? Yeah. What are you showing um, currently? Are you back to the presentation, or I'm still seeing rates on the screen? Nope. Okay, I'm on the, I clicked on apply now and it's moving into the application, so. Yep, well, now we see it. So you should see what is the purpose of your refinance? Yep, that's what we've got. Go okay, ahead. Great. Yeah, definitely getting some lag, so I, I apologize, folks. Not sure what's causing this. So uh, essentially rolls them then through a full 1003 application. It doesn't ask them to rekey any information that they've already inputted. So obviously I already put my name and contact information here. So it doesn't require any rekeying on their part. They can always go back in and save it for later if they want to come back and uh, complete sometime down the road. But it walks them through, as I said, a full 1003 with the exception of a social security number. And the reason we don't collect social security number is because it then does not force you to go through your disclosure requirements. And this has been something that a lot of our customers have said is a huge advantage of our platform because it allows them to screen the application, have their LOs contact the customer and have them sort of talk through and maybe clarify any questions they might have before collecting the social security number and getting a quote unquote complete application, which does require the disclosures. So in high volume right now, it really makes a big difference. But all the questions and the way we present the questions are meant to be, as I said, very simple, uncluttered, and only those that pertain to the particular situation. So some of the questions are dynamic, and I'll show you an example of that in just a second. So if I said I owned additional properties, for instance, you see that it, prop, it uh, pops up other property information that I would have to complete. But if I don't, it doesn't show that. So again, uncluttered, simplistic. I'd already answered my estimated credit score, so it has it there. 
marital status, dependents, et cetera, whether I have a co-borrower or not. Again, yeah. another example of a dynamic question. Yeah, the screen's behind a little bit. We're, uh, we're still seeing what tells us about the property refinancing. Now it just changed to additional properties. Okay. Okay. Interesting thing. Are you on the co-borrower screen? Yep, now we are. Okay. So anyway, so it walks you through. I'm not gonna take you through the full application just uh, for the sake of time here and the fact we've got a little bit of a lag. But as I said, walks through the full 1003. And when that is completed, what happens is a data file, a Fannie Mae 3.2 data file is created. That information goes to the loan officer or some centralized location of your choice. And it also um, goes to whatever system you would like. So we have yet to find a system, a loan origination system or a core platform that cannot ingest that Fannie Mae 3.2 file. So the idea, is when they're kind of done with that, you ingest that data into your existing system. So it's not disrupting any process you have built with that existing system and taking them through the rest of that, that process the way you would experience it today. So it doesn't disrupt the disclosure, so it doesn't disrupt anything else that you might do from a vendor standpoint in ordering credit or ordering verification of income or anything along those lines. So that that's kind of the what we kind of call the happy path or what you would like to see if someone's coming in and, and investigating rates and gets motivated to apply. We also have a functionality for pre-qualification. And this is a part of our digital mortgage platform, but it's also sold separately under the name Prequal Express. And this is a five-minute self-directed borrower experience or borrower process that allows them to get a pre-qualification letter sent to them automatically. And it's a pre-qualification, not, not a pre-approval, but it does use a soft credit pull to power it along with your underwriting requirements, uh, DPI requirements, all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm just gonna really quickly kind of take you through this, but it asks where they are in the buying process, What's the purchase timeline? So your loan officer has an idea of you know, how quickly these people are ready to go. Down payment, do percentages or type in a number, either way you want to do it. Again, it carries over information that I've already inputted in here. Ask for current address. Because when it pulls the soft credit, it uses current address, date of birth, and name to pull that. It does not use social security number. And I kind of go back to the reason I stated earlier as to why we do not do that and the advantages for not doing that. So it's going to, yeah, we're just a little slow for some reason. I don't know if that's go to or sit or what, but <laughs> not sure either. Beauties of technology. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it does check with the Postal Service to make sure that we're using the correct address. It does act if, ask if you're a veteran or active duty service member. The, the system on the pre-qualification or pre-qualification express, it never turns anybody down. The worst case is it refers them to the loan officer, never ever turns anybody down. But this might be one of what we call the fallout spots. So if I said yes, and I clicked yes, I'm planning to get a VA loan, it does fall out. And the reason we do that is because we don't support VA lending on uh, pre-qualification because it can be a fairly complicated process. And as uh, those of you probably know that uh, are involved in VA lending, but I'm gonna say no here. It's gonna keep moving forward and it's gonna introduce the loan officer. And when we do pre-qual express, we, we like to have each one of your loan officers have their own landing page. So it sort of identifies how that customer came in. So if you think about it, your loan officer um, can direct their referral sources, their realtors, builders, attorneys, and such to their own little microsite that allows them to pre-qualify potential borrowers. And then we know how that business was generated and can get that information back to that loan officer very, very quickly. So it introduces them. It says, hey, we're going to do a soft credit pull. This is a, I'm just going to get a test case here real quickly. 
since this is a demo. I'm just going to ask a few more questions about bankruptcy, foreclosure, citizenship, etc. That also might be points of fallout and just referral back to the loan officer. Then when I click next, so basically I'm saying, yep, okay, answered my questions, gave you the authorization to, to do a soft credit pull. It's going to go grab the score and it's going to get all of the various liabilities as well. And it's going to segregate those liabilities into real estate debt and non-real estate debt. And if any real estate debt shows up, it's going to display that. So the first thing it's going to do is say, hey, here's your credit score. I provide them with some hints on what not to do or what to do to keep that where it's at. And then it's also going to show, in this case, I have a I have an outstanding loan balance of 52,000 with homecoming funding. And it's going to ask, what am I going to do with that? Is this a property I'm going to sell? I'm going to continue to own it? Or should I not include it for some other purpose? And it's going to ask income. And it provides all sorts of different ways to input income. You can add additional sources if there's multiple sources. And it's also going to ask whether that income is verifiable for the last two years. If I said no, then that would be a point of fallout. So then it's going through all the various DTI calculations and it's going to qualify based on either a conventional fixed, an FHA fixed, or a jumbo fixed if you offer them, based on which program is best for this particular scenario. There's a couple of different ways to manage the pre-qualification. You can decide to pre-qualify them to the maximum amount based on their DTI and other factors, or you can only maximize the qualification up to what they asked for. That's what we've done in this particular situation. I asked for 350, I got qualified, here are my down payment and loan amounts, and then I can click on getting my pre-qualification letter. And when I do that, the pre-qualification letter is being sent to my email address, and I'm gonna get a little summary of the pre-qualification as well. The pre-qualification letter is completely configurable to your compliance requirements, and you can have all sorts of language in there that says whatever you need to say to, to make sure that that pre-qualification is appropriate. So, so if you think about it, the mortgage platform allows your borrowers to get pre-qualified, allows them to learn and shop and select a program, it allows them to get real-time rates, and pretty much do everything that they might want to do in order to get um, in order for them to, to commit to you. So you can see I got my pre-qualification letter in my inbox. And this is just, it says, hello, David, because that was a sample credit report that I, that I utilized. It does allow them to go back in and edit the letter, should I so desire. Now, obviously you can't edit the letter above and beyond what uh, you're qualified for, but let's say I'm qualified for 350, but I'm gonna make an offer on a property that you know, I only want to show them I'm, I'm pre-qualified up to 320 or something like that. So it does allow them to modify that letter down to a lowered amount if I should desire. So I can update that amount and it will send me an updated letter, update the terms and submit. And it also gives the opportunity to send that letter to a real estate agent should I desire. And it'll have the real estate agent information and agent email, which again becomes another lead potentially for your loan originator if they're not dealing with that particular agent already. So that's the pre-qualification function, just real quickly. So, so that's the mortgage platform. I'll pause here before going on. Sid, any questions? Are the mortgage pre-qualification and the mortgage application of the entire mortgage platform, are those separate from each other or are they only available together? Good question. Good question. So they are yeah. available separate. So the pre-qualification is included with the mortgage platform, but Prequal Express as a standalone solution is available in that fashion. So you can just have the pre-qualification piece through what we call Prequal Express, which does all of the functions that I just showed in the pre-qualification component. Um, or you can have that pre-qualification as a part of the, the, the full solution that includes the application. On Prequal Express, if you do that separately, there's also the capability of having a full application component included. So if you didn't want the full platform, but yet you wanted your loan officers to have their own little microsites where they can send potential borrowers uh, to, to pre-qualify or apply, you can do that as well. 
hopefully that answers the question. And and I will I will say, um, and LKCS can can provide price quotes and all this uh, for all these different platforms and such. But I will tell you, prequal Express is extremely inexpensive. <laughs> And uh, we've got a little offer for you today at the end of the presentation as well that you might be interested in. All right. Um, I'm going to switch over to home equity said, unless there's any. You know, that's the only question that came in. Any, any questions? All, right. All right. Can you see the Lake Michigan Credit Union help homepage, Sid? Not yet. I'll wait a second. Now we can. Okay. So rather than being at a demo site, I'm going to actually show you how our home equity platform is deployed in a live site. Uh, Lake Michigan Credit Union utilizes ours within their, their existing website. And if you go to personal and you come down to home equity loans, it basically moves from their domain, lmcu.org, to this subdomain, homeequity.lmcu.org. So it stays within their domain, but everything behind here now is our software. So you can kind of get an idea how a client has customized and configured this for their particular purposes and design requirements. But it's very similar to the mortgage platform in the sense that it tries to provide immediate value to the client and what most clients are, are going to a website or looking for when it comes, in this case, to home equity loans. And we support both fixed home equity and home equity lines of credit. And again, it's all configurable based on the programs that you offer. And again, the whole idea is we're trying to pull these customers to the sales funnel and get these members to apply. But in many cases, they kind of want, they want to know, hey, I want to customize a rate for my particular situation. So it walks them through a series of questions again. Estimated value, a balance, property type, property use, and zip code. And you can use the zip code to sort of control, if, you know, if you only lend in certain areas. If they put in a zip code you don't lend in, we can pop up some information that you know, explains why you might not be able to service them. Um, or just refer it to a loan officer should you want to do that. So it does a LTV calculation, says my maximum loan amount is $50,000. Again, completely configurable to your underwriting requirements. In this case, they do 80% LTV on both secondary and primary. I can modify this. I can go, oh, you know what? Actually, my balance is a little bit lower than that. I'll recalc. It says, okay, maximum loan amount now is 75,000. And again, pulling them through that sales funnel, click continue below to view your rates and monthly payments. So if I do so, it asks me a few more questions about my credit score and how much of that I'd like to borrow, say 60,000. Then it asks for contact information. Again, it's not asking for contact information until I've already given them something of value or they have kind of moved far enough along in the process where they have a vested interest in continuing moving forward. So you're capturing that customer on a much higher probability or higher percentage than, than you would through some of what I would call more traditional uh, systems that are out there. So it shows up my comparison here, fixed home equity versus home equity line of credit, the different programs. You can see I just received an email from Lake Michigan Credit Union thanking me for my interest and inviting me to apply should I decide not to do it right from here. I can change the loan amount if I want and do different comparisons, but obviously the idea is Okay, I'll pick this one and I'll go ahead and apply. And then it walks me through a home equity specific application. It's not just a rebadge 1003, it's specific to home equity lending. Because I think a lot of things, a lot of times I see out there what people have is they'll have one application for all their different types of loans. And that's a horrible experience because you're, you're taking that customer through a lot of information in some cases that they don't they don't need to complete. So um, our mortgage application on average takes about eight minutes. Uh, home equity takes about five to six. So uh, very efficient, very quick. So I won't run through this because you've obviously seen you know how the the look and feel of the application works. Um, but obviously, I walk, walk through this, hit submit, they get the data, and um, they actually, you know, obviously the way they work it is um, they reach out, contact the member right away, and basically walk through the rest of the process with them. So that's, that's home equity. 
And then lastly, what I wanted to touch on is our personal loans platform. I think, yeah, they, they all sort of have the same kind of look and feel from a process and uh, standpoint, but the layouts, again, are all kind of configurable in terms of how you want to do that. And, uh, but, they're, but they are very specific to the lent, to the type of loan themselves. But again, you want to provide that customer with some information. We have a full learning center in here, which includes like the 10 most um, uh, common questions about unsecured loans. Uh, we have calculators, amortization, loan affordability. You know, answers all the different questions they might have about personal loans, what you can use it for, all sorts of fun stuff like that. So, but the idea is, you know, we want to give them the information, but ultimately they're going to check what are what are your rates and payments, or you know, can I go ahead and apply? And we're going to give them that option in a very quick and easy and well displayed manner. Um, so I clicked on get rates, and again, all of this is configurable based on programs you offer for personal loans, but it asks for credit score and asks for zip code. And we just have some dummy products you know, loaded up in here, and then they'll ask for loan amount. We can limit this based on whatever your maximum loan amount might be for unsecured lending. And it's going to go look at the programs and determine which options might be available to me. So in this case, for a $5,000 loan, I've got one through five-year options. What my rates would be, what the different payments would be, I can change it, et cetera. Or I can jump in and apply. Like, yep, that three-year term makes a lot of sense. And then it walks me through an actual application. And again, it's specific to unsecured lending. It's not a mortgage loan application. And the one thing that's different on our unsecured loan application is we actually do the underwriting for you as well. So you can, I mean, I guess it's similar to Prequal Express, but you can um, actually pre-qualify them and have them, you know, go through a full pre-qualification and even potentially a pre-approval, depending on what your own uh, organization's requirements are for unsecured loans, should you desire. Uh, so we can support a hard credit pull or a soft credit pull, depending on what you'd like to do. We can also support document uploads for unsecured loans as well if you wanted them to like upload a pay stub or something along those lines. So but as you can see the questions are, are similar but specific to this particular application. So I won't walk through the whole thing again, but I just kind of wanted to get you an, an idea of how it might look. Um, I do want to show you a couple of iterations of some other companies that have deployed our software. And so you can see some of the different looks and feels. So Flagstar actually uses us for mortgage, flagstarmortgage.com. And you can see it provides the same options, get rates, get pre-qualified, get refinance rates, apply for mortgage. We just laid it out a little bit differently. Hang on a second. Yep, that loaded. Go ahead. Okay. You see the Flagstar Mortgage site? Yes. Okay. You can see, you know, it's got the learning center, the calculators, you know, all of that. Flagstar actually uploads the data into a CRM, into Salesforce, uh, before it goes into the loan origination system, which is an option if you use a CRM uh, to manage your, your pipeline. Uh, this is a community bank in Wisconsin called Ladysmith Federal. And this is the way they've put theirs together. So again, same idea, just rearranging the buttons a little bit. Colors are configured for them. Yeah, we're just waiting for the screen to refresh. There it is. As soon as I say something, okay. see that's all it takes. <laughs> should, I should count to six or seven before I go further. And I'll show one last one here. People's Bank of Gambier. Again, they just, some different colors, some different things and such, but, but what they've done, so like you click on their logo and it will go back to their main web page. 
but they have also they've also linked our microsite, if you will, within their site at various points. So they might have a banner ad, for instance, that pops up and says, hey, do you want to see our refinance mortgage rates today? And you click on that, it will take, take them to our software. So there's various different ways to, to drive traffic to where you'd like it to go. All right, but I'm going to go jump back into presentation here. Um, and just talk about something we're offering today and then talk a little bit about just the deployment. I, um, so for a limited time, LKCS and uh, Lenderful Solutions uh, offering a free individual landing page for each of your loan officers. So if you go back to when I was talking about Prequal Express, um, we would provide you with your own microsite for each one of your loan originators that would provide the ability for them to apply for that mortgage digitally. So it's not pre-qual express, in other words, it's not the pre-qualification component, but it's just the application component. So if you are, you know, I'll just say a little bit behind the times or looking for a bit better experience or maybe a little carrot for your loan originators to give them a tool that they can uh, deploy with, with potential uh, borrowers that they come across, we'll do that for free. As long as you act sometime in October, we'll provide you three months of that service for free. And I'll kind of give you an idea and, and why we think it's important right now is because we, we do feel a lot of people are getting uh, just bogged down with phone and applications. They'll take a half hour to get done, sometimes longer. But if you can point them to an online solution, which is, as I said, modern, easy, quick, doesn't require immediate disclosure because it's not collecting the social security number, it, it can be of real value to their loan officers that might be slammed right now. So we're offering that up for uh, three free months if you act in October and said in LKCS and your rep can help you uh, kind of move forward with that. This is a sample of what that loan officer landing page might look like. Nice picture, contact information, NMLS number, and apply now and all they'd have to do is click on that button that walks into the application. We're just waiting for it to refresh. Um, last thing. Okay. There it is. We got it. <laughs> okay, so that's the sample landing page. Uh, lastly, what I want to touch on in this just the last few minutes we have remaining here is I, I think uh, companies get scared, credit unions, small banks in particular, get scared about two things when it comes to technology. One is cost, and two is the, the resources required to get it done, to, to get it implemented. And uh, I, I'm here to tell you that one, cost should not be an issue. Uh, all of these platforms that you see are extremely cost effective. We, they're developed for smaller lending institutions specifically, both from a design and from a business model standpoint. It's a software as a, as a service model, meaning we don't charge you for every application that comes through, so you're not paying for junk applications. You can run as many applications through it as you want, as many pre-qualifications through it as you want. It doesn't matter. Um, you are just paid uh, you're just charged one upfront fee to customize and configure for your organization and then a flat monthly fee after that and it doesn't go up uh, based on your usage so very very easy for you to budget and uh, very very easy for you to manage and i think you'll you'll see those amounts should you ask lkcs what they are that they're very very friendly from a technology standpoint and then from a deployment standpoint it we really do the heavy lifting um Rather than kind of giving you a whole list of, of items that we need from you, we, we gather pretty much everything that we need from your existing website. We match colors, logo, contact information, all that kind of stuff, privacy policy, loan product. So when we turn that site over, over to you, really your involvement is primarily to review and, and improve it. Um, I mean, we'll, you'll have to let us know, you know, like, okay, these are the products we offer, these are the products that we don't offer. But for the most part, it's very, very straightforward and simple. And, the long pole in the tent is usually you just, just sort of walking through it uh, internally with the appropriate stakeholders and making sure that it looks and feels the way you want it to. Uh, the product and all of its content has been through multiple compliance reviews by some of the largest banks and credit unions and some of the smallest banks and credit unions. Um, your IT involvement is, is usually pretty limited. Uh, we handle all the, cu the customization and hosting. It's all cloud-based. And um, generally, it's just determining where you want that or what you want that subdomain to be called. And we will work with your IT people to, uh, to make sure that happens and, and deploy that appropriately. Um, if your website is, is already maintained by LKCS, that makes it even a little bit easier. And um, so 
Sid can talk about that uh, if you have some more specific, specific questions, questions after that call. call. And, uh, and lastly, you know, when it comes to pricing, we can use uh, either a pricing mechanism that you just provide us on a regular basis, a daily basis, and we update, or we can actually go to a third-party source for mortgages, and you just tell us what programs you utilize and what commissions you layer on top of that, and uh, we have that all automated so it is in real time. So it's very simple to deploy. It takes about four to six weeks uh, per platform. And uh, I think you'll, uh, we have plenty of references that uh, we can certainly share with you as well to uh, kind of concur that uh, we've had several say it's probably one of the easiest technology deployments we've ever had. So, so um, the, um, the only, only thing, thing, well, the thing I would I touch on in regard, regards, regards to deployment is data transfer. Um, we are willing to code to your LOS, to your core platform in order to move the data if necessary. Usually what we found, it's just a data upload and, and we use a very standardized file that pretty much everybody can ingest. Um, but we're also willing to code to APIs if your current provider has an API and all of that's also included in, in our base uh, base fees. So we make it easy. Uh, Lenderful and LKCS try to make it as easy as possible because we know technology deployments can be challenging, um, but I think you'll find that this one, which would probably gonna be the biggest bang for your buck and the most important thing that you can do to move into the digital age, uh, we make it as easy as possible. With that said, I think I'm I six think minutes early and on time. time. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. And, uh, like, like Michael has been saying, um, you know, LKCS is, is definitely here to uh, to answer any questions and, and help help all of you on your on your. I guess digital exploration and, and digital journey, digital transformation journey. Um, I've I've been sitting in a, a virtual webinar of, of from another vendor actually for the last two days, and, and um, one of the things that they've pointed out was a recent study by a company called Twilio, uh, which is one of the major um, actually text messaging services worldwide, um, and Twilio uh, reported that uh, COVID nineteen um, has been the digital accelerant of the decade um, and has actually led to companies um, adopting new digital strategies and especially digital communication strategies, um, accelerating their, their strategy by an average of six years, um, which I think is important when you look at obviously your competitors and, and, and especially the larger competitors out there. Um, because they're going to be adopting technologies um, and have been adopting technologies at, at just rampant paces. And, and you know, as, as Michael was saying, their ability, and we've seen it with other customers, and we can share those, those examples with you, but their ability to get their product to market, you know, for your, uh, you know, banks and credit unions in four to six weeks um, is, is pretty amazing. Um, and something that's that's I think very very important and very relevant um, right now. So again, I want to thank you uh, for your time joining us in the presentation today. Um, please feel free to reach out uh, to me or any of the sales reps at LKCS, and we'd be happy to uh, to set you up with a personal demonstration um, or get you any information and pricing um, that you may need on any of these solutions. Um, so thank you again. Thanks, Ed.